Hello, hello. Welcome to Art Party Thursday. <laughs> Happy Hi, to everyone. see everybody. Hi, everybody. So we're waving at you. Hi. And if you want to be able to wave back to us, your camera is at the bottom corner of your screen. We would love to see your faces if you're comfortable turning it on. And then your, um, your chat button is down there too. And you can put in the chat where you're from. We love seeing how all the different places we have people here. We've had people here from all over the world. Hello, Vermont. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Long Island. Yep. We got Massachusetts in the house. Here we go. <laughs> Kathy, we got a, somebody, Kathy Floor from Long Island. <laughs> wow. Hey, pop in where you're from <laughs> on Long Island. I'll pop in where I am. <laughs> There's somebody from New Mexico. Yep. La la. It's raining here in Vermont. I suppose in New Mexico, that's a little uh, less common. <laughs> Believe it or not, we had rain yesterday. It was about 45 degrees. We actually had a hailstorm. So, oh, wow. Um, never know this time of year. But of course, it's 80 and sunny right now. So, oh, well, that's nice. We had 80 degree weather yesterday in the Hudson Valley and today it's raining. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's still warm, right? I'm welcoming everybody again. I'm Carla and if we'd love to be able to wave at you and see any faces we can if you wanna turn on your video, which is at the bottom corner. You could also pop in the chat where you're from and I'll get started. Oh, we got the UK in the house. That Hello, UK. Hi, Hello. Hi, Hi Alana. <laughs> Love that. I just got a package of candy from the UK, came to my apartment from my son. All these candies I've never seen before. <laughs> oh. So happy to see everybody. We'll give it one half a minute and then get started. Hope everyone is enjoying their week and finding the weekend. Got LA. This is lovely. We're in for a treat today. All righty then. I am gonna get get us started. Hello, hello. Welcome to Art Party Thursday afternoon. Um, just one quick thing to get out of the way. If we have any technical difficulties at all and the party shuts down for some reason, you go to artpartycentral.org. We will post a link and be able to continue just like that. So once again, that's artpartycentral.org and we'll meet up again right here with the new link if should any technical difficulties occur. Thank goodness they have not been happening. And right now we're gonna mute everyone. Please don't be offended. It's just Zoom protocol and how we run our art parties. I'm back and remember to unmute, which those of you that are regulars knows that that's a pretty big accomplishment here. I'm Carla Goodian of Carla Goodian Art and Design. I'm here to be your host today. I have a line of original watercolored engravings for the home goods and gifts, and I can be found on my website, which is carlagoodian.com. And I'm also so lucky to he hear to have another Art Party Central co-host, which is Sam Stone, assisted by Griffith Evans today as our co-host. And Sam is the owner of Swan and Stone Millinery. And you could find her as admin in the chat if you have any questions or need anything during the party, she is the one to go to. And Griffith is an amazing jeweler and you can also find him on his website. So enough about us and let's get to the party party, which is our amazing talented roster of artists for today. We have six talented, amazing artists joining us. We have Kathleen Lang from the Wearable Garden, Eileen Schwartz from Eileen Schwartz Jewelry, Lisa and Ravi from Bebop and Wally, Laura Jacklich from Laura Jacklich Jewelry, Judith Haas from Judith Haas Design, and Jennifer Lipman Bruno from Jennifer Lipman Bruno Design. And let me tell you how the party is going to shake out today. 
each of the artists is going to give a presentation. And then if time allows, I'm going to ask them one or two questions that were either previously submitted or in the chat. After that, we move to a raffle where there is a $50 gift certificate raffled off to each of the artists' websites. So that's six chances to win just for hanging with us today. We ask that you stick around to the end as you have to be present to win. Also at that time, we give you a discount code good for all six of the artists' websites, as well as my website and the co-host's website. So that's another reason to stick around. And finally, we go move into our after party, which is a really fun time where we invite you to unmute, ask your questions out loud, converse, chat with us, and connect. So let's get to the fun stuff. Our first artist today is Kathleen. Kathleen, take it away. Hello, everybody. I'm Kathleen Lang. And uh, the line of my, my work that I am talking about today are silk scarves that were sustainably created using a process called eco-printing. Eco-printing uses plant material and found metal as the actual design elements. Any of you who know uh, printmaking at all and have dabbled in monotype printmaking, it is a, a form of that. I'm a, for, I'm, I'm a printmaker, papermaker, uh, do a lot of things, um, but I fell in love with this because it's, it's, it's planet friendly. I create very little waste and it's very good for the waterways. So I'm gonna start by showing you this scarf. This scarf was created using nothing but eucalyptus leaves. So the eucalyptus leaves, and you can see the prints on this right now, the eucalyptus leaves were actually laid right on the fabric. And they were rolled up inside the fabric, just like this. Believe it or not, this is a scarf of, of, of fine quality. This was hand weaved in Vietnam. And I am going to steam this to force the plant material to imprint its own dye into the fabric. One of the things that I also do is I make my own tags. It adds a nice little touch and it helps you kind of see the process. Why am I showing this to you right now? This is a little handmade book and it has a print of a paper clip in it. Actually, the paper clip is still on it. I created this book in exactly the same way that I create my scarves. So this actual leaf is a, an oak leaf. This oak leaf was folded up and pressed very tightly and steamed inside of this paper. And it imprinted its own dye on the fabric just as a leaf would print on the sidewalk. So you can see this, I think these are rose leaves. And if I peel this away, you'll see the print. So that gives you an idea of the process. Um, and I want to talk to you about what I have in my collection. This is a wrap. I call it the silk scarf wrap because you not only can wear it as a, as a wrap, but you can also, wear it as a scarf. I have uh, a medium size that's about half as wide as this and a slim for those of you who are more petite or just prefer something for inside of your coat. Now what I'd like to show you is how do I be true to my process but still make a fashion item that you would want to wear with jeans or a night out. So I'm wearing just a black dress that you would wear maybe over a bathing suit. And I can go out to dinner in this and feel very dressed up. So how did I make the blues in this? You might be wondering. So number one, I wanna bring your attention to the metal print in this. That is a, a, um, it's a shutter hook. And I would like to bring your attention to the leaf print. 
So all of these prints, just as in the process I showed you before, where I steam the print, the monotype print into the fabric. Then I make a black bean dye and I, I soak it in a black bean dye overnight, maybe two days, depending on how deep I want it. And then it becomes that blue that is so popular in fashion. Um, I have worked very hard with different botanicals to come up with different fashion lines because it's very easy to just get a bunch of browns and grays. So I would like to bring your attention to this one. This is two-tone. And I'm gonna model it because it might look better that way. Half of it is leaf prints, as you can see. And the other half is black bean dye. And it creates this gorgeous kind of effect. So um, that is our, my way, my very small team, to create fashion items that you can wear for 12 months. So I'd also like to bring your attention to one that, sorry for my back, believe it or not, this one, all onion skin prints, 100% onion skin. So there you go, you can dress up anything. And I, I love that you can just wear a t-shirt on a trip and bring a scarf as luxurious as these. You haven't destroyed the environment in any way. And you can dress it up or dress it down I have different fabrics. I have a silk wool blend and I have a silk to shin. And this one is 100% silk that um, is available on my website. Kathleen, I, I love how sustainable your product is and also how painterly and how much it ties into that printmaking and paper making background. It's fantastic. There's a question, a great question in the chat about whether or not you ever would do something custom with objects that are meaningful to somebody, things they've collected from their garden? Yes, I would. So um, that would have to be a direct interaction that I would do and we would talk about what they have that I can, that I can work with because I would want it to be successful, but absolutely. That's so exciting. I think Pam is gonna be very excited who posed that question. And, I think you kind of told us, but it is the fact that you're using all these organic products and these organic textures, what keeps your products sustainable? Well, that's part of it. So if it doesn't come from the ground, I don't use it. And if it's not renewable in, in, in the way that I take the plant material after it's cooked and I put it in compost, if I ever get tired of using the metal, which I haven't yet, um, I, I scrap it. So there's, there, you know, it's a full circle there. And now I'm saving any byproducts or the, and the early stuff that I started with that wasn't so sustainable because my company made, my little business, tiny little business, made a commitment to sustainability in our homes. And then we realized we absolutely have to reduce the amount of trash that we have. So I save any byproducts that can't be renewed and I'm making mixed media out of those. That is so impressive. I'm in love with your work and in love with your mission as well. Thank you so much. I'm sure we're going to have a ton more to go over at the after party, but we Thank are going to have to move it on today to our second artist who is brand new to Art Party Central. Super excited to welcome Eileen. Eileen, you have to unmute in your bottom. Okay. There you go. <laughs> okay. So hi. I'm Eileen Schwartz, and as uh, Carla said, this is my first art party. Um, I have uh, three different lines. I'm going to show a little bit from everything. I work in sterling silver, in oxidized sterling silver with 18 karat gold, and then um, 18 karat gold. So if you can see on my ears, these are a pair of earrings that I um, sell a lot of and I wear a lot of them. They're called face framers because they sort of follow the jawline down. And these pieces are 
oxidized sterling silver with an 18 karat gold ear wire and a five millimeter pearl on the bottom. And they're very simple, very elegant. They can be dressed up and dressed down. But what's nice about them when they're on the ear, they, they end up, um, the bar faces out a little bit so that you see the gold wire and the oxidized wire, and it creates a nice um, illusion of depth and then a nice contrast of color. Um, I make those with um, different stones, um, black diamonds, garnets, a number of different stones. I also make them in, whoops, in 18 karat gold. And these, the bar has a brush finish on the front. The ear wire is high polished and it's a, just a very subtle contrast. Um, these again are also available in um, different stones. These, these are peridots. Um, these are actually mine and I wear them almost constantly. Again, dressed up or dressed down. Um, these are a larger pair in sterling silver with a hematite bead. And they're, you know, a bigger uh, fun. I'm sorry, I'm like, it's hard. No, you're doing great. <laughs> Left and right. Um, I have to move the opposite direction. But you can see this is a much longer earring but still very lightweight and wearable and the ear wires um, latch securely. So they're not gonna come off your ear. And again, it's a big earring. Um, you know, sometimes sweaters push them up and out of place, but these latch securely. Um, okay, this is another pair of oxidized um, sterling silver earrings. These have garnets in them. They are available with other stones. And um, let's see. Okay, so I can't see. These are, they're about, I guess, an inch and a half long. And um, they, one wire kind of comes in towards the face and the other one goes away. And so it's a, it's a solid piece, but there's, this um, sense of movement. And these are called ripple earrings. They kind of remind me of leaves floating down the, um, you know, in a stream in the fall when the leaves are falling off the trees. And Lee, they really are dancing. And the words that keep popping off in the chat is elegance, because they really have um, an elegant cultural feel, like almost you're going to a dance performance. Can you tell us a little more while you show us some more jewelry about how you came to make your pieces and how you got into jewelry making? Um, I have been making jewelry since I was six years old, believe it or not. Um, beaded stuff. Um, I, I was actually selling in my elementary school store. I was selling jewelry. Um, these, these are pinwheel earrings and they're almost like fireworks. Again, there's that movement without them being actually kinetic. Um, these are oxidized silver with a little gold bead on the bottom. Um, and it's a light airy earring, but it's, it's takes up a lot of space on the ear. Um, okay. These are two separate Earrings. These are um, 18 karat gold, and the scent, the big stone is Druzy, which is a geode. Um, if you go on my website, there's a little bit of an explanation about it. It's it's a tiny crystal structure, and those sparkles that the light is catching the facets on are tiny little crystals that cover the surface of the stone. So it's very sparkly. Yeah, they're natural, the sparkle, yes. right? Yes, I natural. Love that. I love Druzy. It makes me so happy. It feels girly and sparkly, but a little badass because it came from the earth. <laughs> um, this is a peach Druzy with dendritic flakes in the center and those are green sapphires underneath. Um, then I also have 
these are my larger one of a kind pieces. This, this piece is a green sage, sage green colored Druzy. I have never seen anything like it before or since. I don't know if you can see, but there's like little leaf patterns floating across the surface. And I then I picked up that pattern with the gold leaves that also have a engraved pattern. The top stone is an imperial topaz. There's natural inclusions in there. And then you have green tourmaline and cognac diamonds to pick up the golden green colors in the piece. Um, there is there a is question, a, Eileen, maybe you can answer while you show, oh, show us the back first and then I'll ask. Okay, so th there is a converter piece on there that slides onto the pin back um, so that you can wear this as both a pendant and a brooch. My one of a kinds are all hand, whoops, I don't know if you can see that, but they're hand signed yeah. on the back with my name, the copyright, the materials and the year that it was created. Um, so what were you gonna ask? Oh, but I just, I'm, so, I'm bold over by that, that you get the year and the month. That is such a significant, important touch that makes it, you know, so clearly artisan made. Do you make your pinwheel earrings with hanging wires instead of posts? I have not, but I could make that as a special order. If somebody's interested, they can always contact me. You know, each piece is individually made. So um, the only things I can't repeat are what nature has done. Like the that brooch, the green choosy brooch, I could never get another piece of green choosy like that. I, I've been doing this, I've been working with Druzy over 20 years and I never saw anything like that before. Even the um, my stone dealer who cuts it had that was unique. So, and this this is fossilized coral. So you can see that flower in the center. These these are fossilized stones. So originally it was a live piece of coral, um, and the stone. I mean the flower here picks up where. The, in the corner, you see um, what would have been another flower. And so I've completed it with the, um, with the gold flower. And those well, are Medea. I am just gonna say, unfortunately we have to move on, but we are gonna come back to this at the after party. I would love to actually see more of this coral piece and your natural stones and the things that are so unique and one of a kind. Thank you so much for joining us today. Okay. Can't Thank wait you. to talk more at the after party. It goes fast, right? And yes, it does. And this on to Ravi and Lisa from Bebop and Wally, who I absolutely, obviously love. <laughs> Cheers for that. Uh, hey, everyone. Welcome. I'm Ravi. I'm Lisa. And we own Bebop and Wally based in downtown Manhattan. Uh, we want to start off by saying we're really excited. We, both Lisa and I just got a, a second vaccination shot a couple of days ago, and we get on the road Tuesday to head to South Carolina for a show. First show since lockdown, so very excited about that, and yeah, us. Um, today we wanted to talk to give you a behind the scenes look at how we cut off fabrics. Uh, Lisa is holding up the pattern pieces that we have. These are the pattern pieces for the Gladys dress, which is that yellow one over there. We do four sizes, and each size has 12 pieces to it. Um, so once we have the patent pieces, then we, oh, once we have the patent pieces, we sketch them onto patent paper. So this is what we call the marker. And this is the marker for the, uh, the dress that's right over there. And as you can see, this is the front piece, back piece, the sleeves, the collar pieces, um, yeah, and the pockets over there. Uh, Back in the old days, we used to be able to take it up to Midtown and get these copied. Unfortunately, that service is no longer available. So every time we want to uh, cut something, we have unfortunately have to sketch out a brand new. I have to sketch the brand new marker. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then, so we started by, we have a table that's four yards long. So for the dresses, we can only do two per size uh, per cut. And you know, if you've seen fabrics, it comes like this in rolls, but we also get fabrics in bolts, which basically folded over cardboard. 
So we start by laying out the fabric onto the, please, laying out the fabric onto the table. Uh, and usually we'll do about two per size if it's, you know, two per size normally. If it's a print that we've done well with before, we might do three. And if it's something we don't have a lot of fabric off, we might just do, you know, one per size. So after we've got this, this pile of fabric laid out, we'll take that marker that you just saw, put it over it, and then pin everything down so it doesn't move when we when we start cutting. Um, show them the <laughs> so this is what it looks like. So after, this is for the Milder dress that we're going to show you in a little bit. So these are all the all the pieces that go towards the Milder dress. It's just wow. one size. Uh, and then after we cut the fabric itself, we'll cut the interfacing and we we'll cut the lining. If you don't know what interfacing is, it sort of looks like this. And then we iron this on to the bodice, one of the, one of the bodice pieces to give it a bit more weight. And this bundle is about 19 Yeah, that, that, that bundle is about 19 dresses. So that's how we cut our fabric. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about how we make peanut butter jelly sandwiches. Do stay tuned. We're going to jump in and talk about the dresses that we do. Uh, this is wearing the Jane dress. This is cotton canvas fabric, uh, two pockets, and exposed back zipper. Oh, exposed contrasting back zipper in the back. Uh, and we do, we try to get cute, really cute little buttons for this. It's like little bird buttons. Really cute. Hey. Hey. Thank you. This is our best-selling summer dress. It's called the Glad. It's named after Lisa's mom. Uh, it's got all our summer stuff. It's got a lot of contrast stitching on it, top stitching on it, contrasting buttons, and a pleated bottom. It's a great dress. Everyone loves it. We've been making it for 10 years now. It fits most people. Seems to love it. And we also make masks out of all the, um, all the cotton fabrics that we have. And the cotton ma the masks have two layers of fabric and then two layers of interfacing, a little wire brush at the top to mold it to your nose and really comfy elastic that, you know, for longer wear. So along the same line, we did this skirt, it's called a Zoe cotton skirt. It's got two pockets. It's got pleats so similar to the Gladys dress over there. And with all the colors, we do literally about 15, 20 prints um, in them. The next one is the Ava dress something we've also been making for a couple of years. We want to do something different. So we decided to mix and match the, the solids, uh, solids with the print. Um, so Peter Pan collar, it's got solid, uh, sort of, uh, okay. Okay. solid in the pocket as well. And cute little buttons like you saw with the Jane dress. Birds, before. flower buttons. That one's owls. Uh, this is the hazel dress coat. Uh, great for a cool spring day or evening. It's got uh, bell sleeves, contrast stitching, contrasting uh, buttons and zippers. And underneath that is, this is called a Mildred dress. This is named for Lisa's aunt. Um, huh? Oh, sorry. Oh, I meant to say that that fabric is acrylic polyester and we also do cute little jackets out of them as well with matching skirts. Uh, this is called a Mildred dress named after Lisa's aunt. Uh, it's something we did a, a bit of last year, uh, and it did really well. So we're going to do a bunch more. People bunch kept asking for a longer. Yeah, people version. are asking for a longer dress, so we've got this. Uh, again, little interplay of solids and prints, cute little buttons, um, and uh, magic masks again. I uh, just want to say real quick: if any of you all have bought a dress, a cotton dress from us from previous years, and you want to print a mask to go with it, and you don't see the website do email us and we have the fabric we have to make for you. Uh, we also got the skirt, which is all very similar to that with the contrasting interplay of solids and prints. Also cute little bow. below the knee. It's below the knee again. Well, I think it's dressy with these. Lisa doesn't agree with me. It's cotton. No, it's good. Uh, and this is called, oh, this is called the stretchy dress. Uh, this is a best-selling year-round dress. Uh, Fabric is poly lycra. Again, we do it a whole bunch of different prints. And uh, it's a great travel dress and you can you wear know what? I'm gonna interrupt with a couple of questions from the chat. One is the Mildred dress that you showed. Is that on the yes, way? Is that it's on not, it's not. Like this cut piece that you see here, these are the Mildred dress. So uh, it'll, be, it'll be a couple of weeks before we 
get them on the website. But if somebody emails you, will you be able to work with them on it? Yeah, I mean, we haven't started sewing them yet. So we'll start sewing them probably next week. Uh, maybe when we get back from South Carolina, but I yeah, somebody we'd be happy, we're happy to show you what we, yeah. we have a couple, we have a couple here. Well, we'd be more than happy to show you pictures of what we have here. Yeah, reordering sounds like a good thing. <laughs> and, then, and then there's another question about whether or not the skirt, if the zipper is fixed waist or elastic waist. It's a fixed waist. That's what I remember too from mine. They're such a comfortable fit though. Um, what is your favorite summer piece? Uh, probably the Gladys dress. Uh, you know, I have to say that because it's of Lisa's mom. Yeah. So I have to say the Gladys dress is our favorite dress. You're not saying it because I'm wearing it? <laughs> well, because you're wearing it, Carl. My apologies. Yes, of course. Reason. There you go. <laughs> and do you have a favorite print? I like, I like hair spray, which is this. I like the skulls. And Lisa likes the skulls. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, I love it. Well, I know we have more coming at the after party and can't wait to see more clothes. You have been so wonderful. Cheers, Carla. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks so much. And we're going to bring it on to Laura. Laura, take it away. Hi, um, I'm Laura from Laura Jacklitz Jewelry, and I'm here in my Somerville, Massachusetts studio. Um, we're right across the river from Boston. Um, so I make jewelry out of wood inlaid with polyurethane, like these earrings here. Um, and the bright colored part is actually the polyurethane inlay. Um, I start off with pieces of wood like this or this. And these are actually cutoffs um, from a wood turner in Brooklyn. So you can kind of see, you know, these are the edges around where you would cut out a blank for a bowl. And then I cut into the wood and then each of these colors is a different cut and pour. So I'll make it into a block like so. And then from there, I can start cutting out my shapes um, like this one. And you can see it goes all the way through the wood here. Um, this is a piece that I've started to cut into. Um, and I just, I love the wood. Um, one, because it's just such a lovely texture. Um, I polish it to a really high finish and wax it. Um, so it's not a big deal if you get it wet in the rain or something, the water just speeds up, you just wipe it off. Um, and it's so, so light. So you can wear larger earrings like this. These I can barely even feel and I have pretty sensitive ears. Um, you know, a lot of people do. So this one, and some spring colors here. This is one of the newer shapes, it's the crescent shape. Um, and this is a cork cord. It actually goes all the way through like so. And it has this really lovely little clasp. Um, then I wanted to show you some spring colors because I feel like we're getting into the season there. Um, I have this ring here, this one I call the Meyer lemon ring. Um, and it's got a sterling silver back plate here and it's actually signed. And then for earrings, some beautiful pinks for spring here. So this pair, um, it's great for mom or yourself. <laughs> um, they're kind of a cobalt blue and pink on a walnut. And these ones are really beautiful. Um, a longer earring. They have tons of great movement and a little back plate there. I'll show you how they look on. So like these ones, they have a ton of great movement and kind of move with you. Um, and for Mother's Day, I really like stud earrings are one of my most popular. Um, I have this one, which is more of a neon color. Um, and these are really fun. They're just like a little bit of pop of color to your outfit. If you're not feeling um, brave to put on big earrings. And I have smaller size ones like these. This is a sustainably sourced East Indian rosewood. Actually, some new ones with some really pretty peaches. This is a new shape, a little rounder. 
And then another great one for mom is these little necklaces are another popular item. Um, this one has a sterling silver chain and a bright finish. I also make an oxidized finish. So this one has really fun um, kind of tropical spring colors. I also have a bit larger size here. So this one is one of my favorite colorways here. This kind of like a lilac and a celery with some peach. And I'm actually working on some fan earrings, which is this style in a very similar color. Um, so they would look like these are gonna brighten up once I actually polish them. Um, and those, I should be um, getting them on the website in a couple weeks. But if you wanna pre-order and get first dibs, definitely send me a message. Um, let's see. I'm gonna make a suggestion that I think your colors would look so great with the Bebop and Wally dress, like the vintage vibe and the colors. Yes, and I love people. that. And I, you know, some people like to wear them with neutrals, but if you're wearing them with a bunch of colors, I would just pick out a main color. So you pull out like a blue and then you can bring out the blue tones in your dress or other accessories that you're wearing. Um, these ones are just a sweet little hoop and they kind of click and unclick. Um, these are about the same size. This one is a front facing and this is a side facing one. So you get a cool little detail here. And then again, super lightweight. So you could even go to the larger size hoop. That's these ones. Um, and I'm trained traditionally as a metalsmith. So all the findings I make out of sterling silver. And I kind of just ex was experimenting in the studio with different materials um, to come up with my process. So. It's really fun to be able to use traditional metal smithing techniques with kind of unconventional materials. I just, I love how thoughtful you are, especially about the sides that every angle has a really interesting look, you know, place to look at. There's a question in the chat about what kind of wood are you using? Oh, sure. So I'm using all kinds of exotic hardwoods that are all cutoffs from other makers. So I work with a wood turner, as I said, in Brooklyn. I work with a guitar maker who's local here in Somerville. Um, and if I do purchase wood, it's purchased cutoffs from companies that use sustainable forestry pack practices. So I'm trying to use no new lumber. Um, and I really like being able to use the scraps um, like this that I can repurpose. So it's zero waste for the woodworker. And then it's a great piece of wood for me. Um, yeah. That's fantastic. So you're contributing to sustainability as you do. This is great. Yeah. And it's fun to kind of collaborate with other artists. It's almost like, you know, you become a part of their process and they become a part of yours. Yeah, I love all this interconnectedness, just like I could picture you wearing it with the with the dress, with the scarf. We can all, you know, pair everything together and support each other, which is fantastic. Yeah. Now, I know you showed a couple of things, but is there anything else in particular from Mother's Day you want to share with us? Yeah, so I um, really love the stud earrings for Mother's Day. Um, and again, these I have a whole different shapes and sizes. So I have this kind of elongated oval, and then I have um, a more round color. These are really, really fun spring pieces. These are the cherry lime uh, studs. I also have a new shape, which is, these aren't on the website yet, but Again, go ahead and message me. Um, they'll be up soon. These ones are a uh, new shape that's that crescent shape. And they're really sweet. They just kind of frame the face. So we have part. about three questions that I've written down for the after party. Oh, wonderful. We have to move on. But thank you so much for sharing all this with me. I'm oh, thank I'm you. Over, so I can't imagine everyone else isn't. That's fantastic. Can we move on now to Judith? Judith, we're so excited to have you back. Hi, Carla. It's so good to be back with, between such a beautiful artist and really interesting work. Uh, so yeah, I'm Judith Haas, for those of you who don't know me. 
I'm a jeweler and I also make fine art. I'm originally from the Netherlands, but I uh, have living in New York for many years now. And I make all my uh, work in my workspace in uh, Brooklyn and Williamsburg. And um, let me show you this piece first. This is um, fine silver that I fuse with 24 karat gold. It's uh, a, a technique called kumbu, uh, where just fuse a sil a silver and gold, and there's no adhesion or um, uh, soldering involved. And then I oxidize it, and that then becomes black. But um, then I engrave into the oxidation, and you can see then the underlying surface uh, in it again. In this case, that is uh, fine silver. And uh, this technique is called Scarfido. And these braces are very easily adjustable. And um, I have a few other ones, like this one, for example, as well. So silver, gold, and black, which makes it go with a lot of things. And they are coming in different sizes, from a quarter inch to uh, about one inch with all different patterns. And um, they are all very easily adjustable. They don't break, so one size fit most people. And this bit um, style, I also have uh, many necklaces and earrings. There are some new ones that I um, made recently, like this silver piece with moonstone. And there's another moonstone piece. I hope you can see it well. And then some earrings. And also, um, there are pieces that are have that same combination of uh, silver, gold, and black. And um, this one has some also some uh, sapphire in it. And to match with it, I also have uh, new rings. Uh, these rings are made uh, from uh, recycled gold. Um, it's maybe a bit hard to see because it's so small, but the bezel is a wavy pattern. And um, that one I can do custom made or you can buy the size that is there. And the silver ones are um, adjustable in size. Let me show you a few more. So I can make them um, with a stone, uh, for example, that I have that is either root-related quartz or green, green tourmaline-related quartz or um, uh, onyx. Um, but I can also make them with a gemstone that you already have if you want to recycle a piece or renew it. So that there's, uh, besides the jewelry, I also make fine art. Uh, for example, this piece. Um, I use different cap copper alloys, uh, so for example, brass, uh, copper, and um, I oxidize them. And um, th they are inspired by how nature reclaims the urban environment. So I love it how um, uh, metal changes color when it's being exposed to the elements and uh, how uh, buildings get overgrown with green to make uh, cities more livable. And uh, these as well, I uh, engrave into the metal, so you see the underlying surface. And in this case, I also painted on, on the uh, patina, the oxidation, um, in this darker green to have a bit more options. And uh, the patterns are kind of art deco. And um, by that, um, I also have make jewelry even in that same technique, a mixture of metals. For example, this bracelet uh, that matches this uh, necklace. And these ones I um, uh, line with felt, so it's comfortable in your skin. And they are riveted together. And again, they are easily adjustable. And you can see maybe the little gold accents in it that make it um, that show the underlying surface. So that comes also with matching earrings, like some the ones I'm wearing. They come a little bit bigger and smaller. This is kind of bluish, or this is better to see. 
and then copper in the back and some pleather earrings. So, Carla, did you have any questions? Yes, and first of all, I just want to say I am like a super fan. I don't know if everybody can see this amazing ring and her bezels are so unique and it, it's just I get so many compliments. It's a beautiful ring to wear. I'm so proud to own it. Oh, thank you. And do you do custom? So if somebody wanted something specific or to work with one of your techniques over the other at a certain size bracelet, can you accommodate that? Yeah, so anything that uh, that you see in uh, in silver, I can also make in gold and anything uh, you see in gold, I can make in silver. I can do um, quite a few earrings can be clip on earrings. Uh, so for example, this size, if it's about at least this big, then um, then it can be with a clip on thing in the back. And um, the necklaces, they can be um, whatever size you want. You can just contact me. And and how about the art? Them. How about the some, art? Because your artwork is so beautiful and unique. If somebody wanted a specific size piece to fill a certain area or a spot in their home, can you do that? Yeah, yeah. I can. Uh, I have different sizes and things, so I can somebody has a size in mind, I can definitely make it. The oxidation always comes out a bit different, so it's it's harder to make the exact uh, um, piece again in a different size. It doesn't really work like that, but if uh, there are certain patterns I can reproduce and go a little bit towards the colors that are nice, uh, that, that somebody prefers. So yeah, I make them up to uh, two by three feet, uh, from postcard size to two by three oh, feet. That's great. And yeah, and as much as everything looks so beautiful here over our art party Zoom, if somebody needed or felt they wanted to see the work in person, is there a way for them to do that? There is a way to uh, meet me in uh, person in my uh, studio in, uh, in uh, Williamsburg uh, by appointment, but there is also a store in the Upper West Side called Big Bag on the 77th street in, in uh, uh, Manhattan, uh, on the Upper West Side that carries uh, almost all of my silver and gold pieces. They have quite a lot now and I've been working with them for, for 10, 20 years, so. Uh, well, that's great. I have to stop by there because I go up. Oh yeah, your mother lives there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Yuda, thank you so much for a great presentation. Um, we'll see you again at the after party. I cannot believe we are up to the last artist. This always feels so fast to me. Jennifer, will you take it away? Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer from Jennifer Lippman Bruno Design. I will give you a very, very brief history how I got to where I am today. College pre-med psych major, graduated with an art history major, studied jewelry a year in Philadelphia, and a year in New York, by the way, I lived on West 72nd in Manhattan for many, 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 many years. Um, so after studying for the year, I was uh, the design director for a jewelry designer. Um, after the five years, they closed. I went to my second creative love, which is knitting. I had my own business for 10 years where I designed accessories and patterns for hand knitters. Um, after that, sold that company. Uh, still thriving, which is exciting. And so for the past three years, I've been, I went back to my true love, which is jewelry making. So I knew I wanted to do something a little different. So I started with sterling silver and concrete. All of these pendants are reversible. There's never a bad side. If you see a little piece that has the silver, when you flip it over, it might have a different color concrete and they're like little bowls holding it. So those are the, some pendants. Um, and then for earrings, the most common question is, aren't they heavy? And the answer is no. Concrete is lightweight. It's lighter than resin, it's lighter than stone, super comfortable. I cannot wear heavy, so I will never make heavy. Um, also for the earrings, I always put the post a little lower so it sits higher, so it's really flattering. And even the larger pair are lightweight, every day, all day. So unlike my earrings, for my rings, I go very big and bold. 
So again, I started with sterling silver and concrete. The inside of my rings, I kind of call them elevated bubblegum rings because of the, the shank. And then after a while, I was like, I need, I need my bling fix. That's how I started in the jewelry. So then I started incorporating diamonds with the concrete and silver. And I just love the juxtaposition and have people do a double take and be like, what, that's concrete and diamonds? So I took it one step further and I added gold to the mix. So these are all gold and diamond and concrete and they're on oxidized silver chains. Now these, unlike the silver ones, are not reversible except for two different styles. This little guy, because it does flip when you wear it. So there's a diamond on both sides. So you always look phenomenal. That's what I'm wearing also in the little pear shape. And then I took my favorite style in the silver and turned it into gold. So these are all, again, the gold, diamond, and concrete. They come in four different styles. I'm wearing, you can see how they lay the, the circle. There's the square, a pair, and rectangle. So I have all these in plain silver and concrete. And then I did it in the gold, the diamond, and the concrete. And someone actually asked for them in silver, diamond, and concrete, which I did, and they turned out beautiful. So that is what I'm known for. But I also wanted to show you guys, I'm gonna just start showing you as I talk. Um, I did something on Instagram. It was a 21 earring challenge. So for 21 days, we ha I had to design a different earring and it was literally every single day, I found out the night before. No, no pre-planning, no cheating. And so from that, I knew I love to be pushed. I have to be pushed. Um, and I knew I'd get some really good pieces out of it. And so what I'm showing you are the pieces that will be going into my collection. Um, so everything here is sterling silver and uh, diamonds. Um, and I pushed myself in the way that I normally don't ever do French hooks. And everyone's like, do you have French hooks? So I have a couple of those. Um, here are some more pieces. So two of these are all silver and one is silver and diamond. So you see this, the other French hook, that's the little sister of this guy. So none of these are on the website just yet. Um, if you would like to do a private something so you can see them better, but they are all available. You just have to contact me and I'm very, very friendly. And the last thing, I'm just throwing a lot out there. This is all on the website. This is just a quick, easy Mother's Day present, graduation present. Um, these are all different stones, hand strung and knotted on silk cord by yours truly. And they can either be worn on the wrist or you can wear it long, I'm very short. You can wear it long and multiple or you can double it as a necklace. So these are great, great pieces if you need any last minute gifts for That's anyone. So great that you could still get stuff from Mother's Day. And I love yes. how you're pushing your own envelope, you know, how you take a challenge and you've met and you do different things. Now, I think at one point you said something about a client asking if something you were doing in the gold, concrete and diamond yeah. could be done in silver. So is that my answer to the question of do you customize and work one on one? I love working with everyone. I've worked with so many people from our party. We have the best time. Um, so they wanted these earrings. They actually wanted the gold. So I did this with diamonds. And I love working with you guys. So if there's a question, and I also converted some silver earrings to gold for someone because they wanted it. So ask. If you don't ask, the answer is already no. I, 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 and I also just think that should be the name of a band, Concrete and Diamonds. I think. <laughs> Concrete and Diamonds. Well, if I had a singing voice, maybe, but I don't, so. I'll stick to that. Oh, I love that. Now, how does the con does the concrete require any special care? So the it sounds odd, but I always say treat the concrete like you would treat a pearl. It's still porous. I do put a sealant on it, 
but don't go swimming, don't take a shower, first, last thing on, first thing off. So if you put lotions and potions and perfumes, always do that before you put the jewelry on. Huh, that's a really great tip that I would not have thought of. <laughs> that's wonderful. Can we see one of the gold, concrete and diamond pieces up to the camera and close up as our last thing for today? Sure. So here are, did I get it? I can't focus. Yeah, no, you, you're getting it. You're good. I'm getting it. Yeah. So all of these are on oxidized sterling silver chains. Oh, that's beautiful. And then they're, and then you could see the gold on the side. Well, thank you so, so much, Jennifer. Thank I you. I believe this brings us to the end of our presentations for today. Um, it's been such a joy to be your host and thank you to all our artists for showing their work and sharing their work with us and telling your stories. And I want to thank all of you for coming and supporting Art Party Central, the arts and our artists. Um, we love having you here. Um, it's our one of all of our favorite things to do is to be here and connecting with all of you. So please continue to do so. Please tell your friends, bring people to the parties, continue to follow us on our social media and receive our newsletters. Um, in about a minute, we're gonna move on to the raffle and we're gonna be doing for those of you regulars, a couple of different things today. One, because I am forgetful and I cannot be trusted to do anything off script. We did <laughs> not open with the usual toast that we do. So instead, I think we should toast right before we have our raffles. So let's unmute ourselves and raise our glasses to being together and say cheers. And we're gonna cheers. say cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. At this point, the other different thing is our co-host is gonna announce our winners today. So please feel free to stay unmuted. And Sam will do the reminders of what you do if you're a winner as well, but you're, please stay unmuted and cheer along with us as the winners are announced. Okay, so I think we have a, maybe potentially a little feedback. So, nope, I think we're okay. Anyway, so we have, uh, our winners are in for the wearable garden. Alana Monet. I'm gonna interrupt because you have to remind people to put their email in the chat. Yeah, okay. I will. <laughs> she, can't, she can't stand it. Um, <laughs> so um, for the wearable garden, we have Alana Monet. So uh, cheers and congratulations, Alana. Thank you. And, um, you. If, so what you can do is put your email in the chat to everyone, or you can go ahead and private message me at admin. And that way we can be sure to get your, uh, your gift certificate to you. And this goes especially for anyone whose name on Zoom is different from your name in real life or um, <laughs> that we might see on your email. Uh, for Eileen Schwartz Jewelry, we have Heather Trimlet. Congratulations. <laughs> Bebop and Wally, we have Marsha L. Oh, yes, Marcia, that's <laughs> And uh, for Laura, Laura Jacklich Jewelry, KC. KC. <laughs> and for, so you see what I mean here, right? <laughs> if we don't have your full name, we really need your email. Um, for uh, Judith Haas Design, we have Dale. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Dale's excited. Dale yeah. just lit up. Um, Jennifer Lipman, Bruno Jewelry, Kathy Floor. So congratulations to everyone. And um, and again, if you just send me your email, that just makes everything easier. Um, and that would be fantastic. Um, and Carla, did you want me to uh, let everyone know about tomorrow's fundraiser? Um, that would be fantastic. Why don't you go ahead? Okay. So we have just one more party this week. It's very unusual for us and it's a very special event. So we'd like to invite you all to join. Um, and that will be a fundraiser for the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra. So the Friends of Annapolis Symphony Orchestra are going to receive 20%, a 20% contribution from any sales that come from that event. Um, 
and that is going to be just one party tomorrow, Friday, um, at 7.30 p.m. So instead of having our usual two parties, it will be one party, and that's a benefit for the Annapolis Symphony. So the artists for that party will be Ecologic, Megan Patrice Riley Jewelry, Carla Goodian Art and Design, Swan and Stone Millinery, Posh Felt, Suzanne Schwartz Jewelry, and B Felt. So um, if you'd like to join us, you are certainly more than welcome to join us and we would love to see you there. If you just wanna to go to artpartycentral.org, um, you can RSVP right on the website, just like all of our other events. And I'll remind you that that Swan and Stone Millinery that's presenting is our co-host right here. And I wanna thank her for doing an amazing job and getting every all the links and everything you're seeing. She made sure everything behind the scenes went smoothly. So I'm very grateful to my friend and colleague, Sam. But one other thing, because we want everyone to feel like a winner, the code for today's party for 10% off is Art Party APR29. A-R-T-P-A-R-T-Y APR29. And that gets you a coupon for all of six of the artists' websites, as well as my website, Carla Goodian Art and Design, and Sam's SwanandStone.com. So I can't thank you all again for being here with us. We miss you in person, but we think this is just a fabulous way to connect. For those of you that are busy and have to go, we understand and thank you again for being here. And for those of you that want to stay and chat with us, Welcome to the after party. Unmute yourselves, pop any questions you have in the chat or just feel free to come right out with them now. Any questions? Ah, I see one in the chat right away. After party question for Bebop and Wally. If a size is sold out on the website, is there a possibility you have material and can make one? Uh, we it's hard for us to make an individual dress I, but also there's certain things for example if it's a Gladys dress we are uh we are, I think we're make, making more right Gladys possibly we possibly so probably, email us we can figure it out but we yeah. don't really do individual things it just takes way too long to do it but yeah please feel free to email us we can go from it there. depends also with what like fits one of these. I mean, it depends on how much work is involved. If it's like a stretchy, that's something I would be able to do pretty quickly. Whereas these are so complicated that they would take much longer. Great. And Sam, do you have any questions that came in while, during the party that I might have missed? Um, I do. Um, so as you know, uh, there were some questions that were coming in for Laura. Um, that but we were sort of running out of time so i just wrote them down um so um one question that i just love is what what's the best way to match your earrings with your necklace do you go for the wood or the colors and the lines or how do you how do you help customers coordinate a set from you I love that so much. So I um, honestly do both. This one actually is the wood that's coordinating, um, but there are some colors here that are the blues um, and some of the lighter colors, the purples. Um, so I like to pick like one or two main colors and then bring them across. You can also do, I mean, if you want them to really match, I have ones that are um, so this one. It's like a matching. Oh, honey. Hat. This is the Bird of Paradise earrings and the tropical pendant. Um, but again, you can always mix, mix and match. And I can send you photos of different pieces together. We can kind of play with them. Because um, it's also one of those things that when you put on a piece, it really lights you up if it's your color. So if you have a color that you're really drawn to, like red, I know Francesca loves red. <laughs> I saw her here. Um, you know, or blue, I would pick out a main color um, and kind of use that as your jumping off point. Um, and again, if you, the wood too is a good, these are both walnut, um, I believe. But I also, I don't know, I like to mix and match. <laughs> right. um, so, and then just, just quickly, um, there were just a couple others of, do you have, do you have any clip-ons and do you have any pins? Um, clip-ons, I don't have any in stock, but I 
be happy to um, do custom for you. Um, just send me an email. Uh, let me know what kind of color palette you're interested in. Um, and pins, yes, I do. Um, let me grab. I knocked over a bunch of stuff, but this one is a necklace that's also a pin. See, it's got a pin fun. back there. That's fun. Um, I have some larger ones and some smaller ones too. So if you have a certain size in mind, um, get in touch with me and I can show you what I have in stock for pins. Thank you. Oh, can I ask a question while we're here? Yes, ma'am. Of course. Okay, so um, I'm particularly fond of your your designs and the colors that you're using. Um, and I love the one that you just showed us because um, I, I actually have one that is on, I, I'm assuming it's on a similar kind of, uh, is this a cable of some sort? Yeah, so this is sterling silver uh, cable and it's got a little friction clasp here. Ah, okay. You can pull this right off um, and wear it as a brooch or put it on a different chain or cable. Yeah, I because I I'm thinking like something like that. I mean, obviously you can you can lay it however you want. You could do it long or you could do it sideways. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Take off this one. It's just I I love the look of that um, because you know, and I do. It's so funny. Like I I do notice like when I'm looking at things, I'm always looking at earrings. But I know that that something that I really want that I would love to design with you is something similar to that. Uh, or because, you know, like with a chest, it's hard to do something like that sits somewhere. And that's why I think I like having them like more like a choker length than I would want. I'm going to interject here. And just, yep. I think it sounds like you two need to set up a Zoom appointment, so we'll make sure that Laura has has your email because there was a question for um, Judith. Except now, oh, there you are. I don't know why I can see you, um, Judith. I think someone was asking to see the earrings that you have on just as we were switching to the next person because I saw that in the in the chat. And so, can you show us those earrings up close? And are those on the site? I, I'll try to find them though. Yeah, they uh, should be under patina earrings. Okay. So these are, uh, they have a sterling silver post and uh, they are uh, copper. And I also have them a tiny bit smaller. So like this is the smaller, this is about an inch long and then there is, a, I have the bigger one on. They have blue, uh, copper, different colors. They look and, uh, so nice with your hair pulled back like that and the mm -hmm. size is perfect. And then I have them also in silver and gold. I love that. And that will be on their uh, yes, earrings just without patina. So I have a question for our new artist. I have a question for Eileen, which is, do we see Eileen? Uh, I'm over here. I got kicked off my internet with. So I'm, I am here. Great. Okay. So our question is, how has your work changed over the years you've been doing it? And what's your favorite part of doing it? Um, well, when I started, I was working in sterling silver. And um, I think I was at a show and I noticed... Um, a uh, earring pair uh, from a stone seller of Druze. And I fell in love with that stone at that point. And since then I have really worked one of a kind. Um, and a lot of times the stone informs my work. You know, it, it really leads the design. Um, and then there was there was a period when I went I um, wanted to mix the two the sterling and the gold 
And I happen to really like the contrast of the oxidized silver with the gold. It's, it's just, it's so dramatic. You can wear it with anything. Sterling silver naturally oxidizes anyway. So um, here it is. This is this is what it is, and you don't have to clean it. There's almost no care with um, oxidized pieces. Um, love you know, that. But, and I love this, you know, this unification between everybody of like some of the strongest relationships I think we have as artists is with our materials. Um, <laughs> I'm going to bring it back to Kathleen for one question. And then there's a fabulous question for everyone in the chat. So for Kathleen, quickly though, the question is about stabilizing your colors. Are they going to fade? Are they going to wash out over time? You're muted. Yeah. Uh, so um, thank you for asking that. So number one, I want to tell you, I wouldn't go through all this work. I probably have 200 pieces in my inventory right now that each were made one of a kind. Um, each of, so in all textile dyeing, there's a pretreatment to open up the pores, the, the, the threads so that they grab color and retain it. So I use alum, soy milk, almond milk, um, I use the, uh, the metal in my designs is also a natural mordant. It, it opens up the fibers. So, um, so that's how I stabilize the color. And my work is guaranteed for life because this is sustainable. So if in five years or 10 years, hopefully we're still doing it in 20 years, you say, you know, this faded, I'm going to trade it in with you because I don't want anything to end up in a landfill. That's fantastic. You're doing so much good. Um, I can say one thing in here because I worked with Kathleen a few months ago and I just have to tell you doing a Zoom call with her is wonderful. And I just Aww. love the cards. Thank Aww. you. Yeah, that, that really was, it's so nice to meet you all in person. And then we can pick something out for your special and special gardener. Hi. I oh, thank to you give for you wearing a, the scarf. Yeah, yeah June, it looks fabulous on you. <laughs> thank you. Now, this is a question for everyone. So this is going to be a case of six artists who can talk the loudest, the fastest, I think. But <laughs> and the question came in from our person who I recognize from the chat as being from the UK. Um, is any of your work inspired by any specific art movements? That's a good question. I'd say not arts movement for me. Mine is environmental. That's great. Anyone else? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's an arts movement. Um, I have a graphic arts background and um, I use a lot of linear space, linear lines, negative space. So that's, you know, that is where my thought process usually starts, um, simplicity. I really like, I don't know if it's so much an art movement, but more of a design movement, mid-century modern, of course. Um, and I'm always looking to the interior design world um, mm -hmm. for color inspiration and line inspiration. I pick that right up is, <laughs> <laughs> it's the shape and the vibe. And I would think, you know, same thing maybe with, if I'm guessing correctly with Bebop and Wally, that it's more vintage, it's more time period inspired. Oh uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, like, you, like you said before, uh, Lisa loves vintage shops and, you know, we've gone to a whole bunch of them. So Definitely. Th that's our inspiration, yeah. vintage, retro. Mm -hmm. So I did see a funny thing the other day. I saw one arm man going to a secondhand store. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Thank Isn't you. I'll be all That is bad, bad, bad. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, do you have anything else? Because I have one more otherwise. I do not go for it. Jennifer, how do you come up with your new designs? Like, could, you seem to be like really growing as an artist. So we're. So this is, this is embarrassing to say. Um, I either have to get really bored or pushed up against a deadline. And that's when I, if I have too much time and too much freedom, I just, I wander and I think, so I need to be pushed and then things will come out. And I, I stay very 
minimal, simple. So it's always just a way how to take it to a next level, if it's materials or layering. Um, yeah, so sheer boredom. Waiting, <laughs> waiting when my kids are at piano lesson. <laughs> The boredom, I don't know about, but like cars, but definitely the deadline, deadline driven. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, certain personalities absolutely have mm -hmm. to have them, whether it's an upcoming show or an upcoming art party, mm -hmm. that you might be challenging yourself to meet these mm -hmm. deadlines. Yes. Sam, you're muted. Yeah, I, I know. I just realized that. I just wanted to add to Jennifer saying boredom. Knowing that she's a mom, boredom takes on a different meaning. It's actually like <laughs> celebrated, I'm going to guess. So it's it's actually like allowing a little mental space. And she's calling it boredom to, to, to simplify. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's worded much nicer. I just feel like you're speaking to me, Jennifer. <laughs> it is. It's, it's when just your mind, your mind is more just, idle. It's like when you go, when I say boredom, it's like you're just it's like blank and then it just drifts. And then when something comes to you, then it's like, I'm a, it's like a machine gun going off. It's like so many mm -hmm. different ideas and it's mm -hmm. amazing from that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love all these creative minds we're exploring today. <laughs> Anybody have any other questions? If not, we're gonna thank you. And if you'd like to see these artists present again, we're back again tonight at 7.30. Otherwise, we're gonna say have a great afternoon and thanks again for joining us. And we can see you tomorrow. Thank you. Hope to see you thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank see you, Sam. Soon. It's always bye such bye. a treat to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Carol. <laughs> oh. Bye, you guys. Bye.